Well, hello there, little one. Can I have you come assist me with something? Dad says I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. But I have rock candy. Yeah! Mister, I would follow you to the ends of the earth. Excellent. Step into my office. Okay. Here, let me help you. Little guy, it's time to go home. Huh, there's this conveniently placed note on top of this building. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh crap. Hey Rangers, welcome to Super Important Views. My name is Steve, and today I've been going over the Bandai Tamashii Nation SE's Monster Art Space Godzilla. This is a request by actually quite a few people since the start of this channel. I've actually had a lot of people actually chime in the comments wanting to see a Space Godzilla review. So I finally put one out for you guys. Sorry for the late review. But if you guys don't know who Space Godzilla is, he's from the film Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla from the Heisei era, which came out in 1994, which pretty much what happens in the movie. G-cells end up in a black hole, Space Godzilla comes out of the black hole. Ends up going to the island where little Godzilla and Godzilla are just kind of chilling. He ends up kidnapping little Godzilla and prisoning him in crystals, going to the city, wreaking havoc. And Godzilla, with the help of Momogira, has to go and get his son back. It's like the story of Taken, but in Godzilla form. Because Godzilla has a particular set of skills. And the main reason I have this figure is because I just love Space Godzilla. I always thought he was a really cool, unique looking kaiju. Even though he's essentially just Godzilla with crystals, I thought there was enough difference between him and Godzilla to make him his own kaiju, which I always thought was really cool. And he's just a very visually striking monster. And he'd definitely be up there in my favorite Godzilla kaijus of all time, which I still wish I had Mogira and I really need to order that guy. But without further ado, first packaging, getting you out of the way for a second. The front of this box is actually really sweet where you have the image of Space Godzilla on the front of it, which is actually the toy that you see that was inside the packaging. He's not off screen. But it has this nice purplish hue to the packaging, it has his name on the bottom here. It tells you a little bit about the monster. It's on the clear plastic portion of the package. Came on 2012. Top of the packaging, get this nice crown look, kind of reminiscent of Space Godzilla's little crown on top of his head. For the side of the package, you get more purplish hue of Space Godzilla's body in the background, black and white image of Space Godzilla in the foreground. Also got his name in metallic silver on the bottom, looks pretty cool. Other side of the packaging, just more of his name. For the back of the packaging, get a lot of nice dynamic poses of Space Godzilla. Also, you get to see some of the special effects pieces on the bottom. Some stuff I can't understand, and some Lego mumbo jumbo. So, let's get into the review. All right, so now that we have Space Godzilla back in this review, first we're gonna go over a few of his accessories, starting with his Corona Beam Ant Stand, which actually is one of the, my, the more impressive looking SH Monster Arts figure beam effects where you have the beam coming out of his mouth here when you have it inserted into it. Now, only one issue, which we'll go over in a second with this freaking little stand, but for the actual beam effect, it looks freaking awesome, where you have this nice metallic gold over the beam here, where it still has this really nice translucent look to it, where at the tip of it, or I guess actually the part that inserts into his mouth, you have the metallic silver here, which looks really good, and I love how it just erupts out of his mouth, and it splits off in these multiple paths, because in the film, he actually controlled where his beam actually went, and this kind of helps to replicate that effect, which overall looks freaking awesome. And then you have his normal display here, where it's just this more rocky textured base with uh, a couple of varying shades of brown here. And it also has the crystals ejecting out of the top of it, which is something that is really cool to have with Space Godzilla, and this is definitely one of the more striking looking of the display stands for the beam effects. The only issue I have here is where the stand actually hooks into here with mine. You just stick the Tamashii Nation Act stand in this to it. And mine, and which it works pretty much like this with every of the stands, it doesn't stay in there very well. Like pretty much any kind of movement, especially when you're sitting it down or just trying to adjust the beam, it pops right out of there, which is kind of annoying. But once you get everything all situated, like this effect piece looks amazing on it. And especially if you have the little Godzilla effects to go with it for an entire display. Because the cool thing about little Godzilla is he actually comes with a display where you can kind of replicate the crystal prism that he was inside of. But it actually looks really sweet when you have it set up next to Space Godzilla where you have this sitting underneath. 
or even off to the side to just help replicate more of that crystal look like how it was in the city. And I just love that how each of these figures for this movie actually helped to tie in all the figures into one nice cohesive package and it just works really well. But even by himself, Space Godzilla's accessories are still probably one of the more impressive of the Monster series in terms of the base and how the beam looks. I'm bringing Space Godzilla in for a closer look. That's called freaking amazing, just like every other SC's Monster Arts figure, where it's very reminiscent of the film, where it's this nice, very dark blue skin texture here, which the skin texture overall, is for the head anyways, it's very reminiscent of Godzilla with the wrinkles. But what's kind of different, one, get this nice translucent yellow plastic here for his crown. It looks amazing where it has this almost auburn look to it. The dorsal spines on the back here are actually very pointy and this more metallic shade until it hits the crystals here. Which are still metallic but in more of a white tinge to them. Which coming down, especially when you get closer to the bottom here, it starts moving back into this more metallic shade. But they look freaking amazing, especially with the tail here and this clump of crystals for the end of it, which he uses to impale Mogiro with. But moving back to the head details, the teeth have this very nice white glossy paint job over top of them. The inside of the mouth has this nice blood red texture here for the ton, the membrane on the side, even has a lot of very nice details here on the roof of the mouth. Looks amazing. Then starting to move down the rest of his body here, starting with the neck here, you just notice this more very dark shade of red here, closer to a burgundy. Moving down his neck here into his saggy boobs and his lower abdomen but for the outside of it you get this very dark blue and it's where the details for Godzilla very differentiate between him and Space Godzilla where now we get the crystal formations here and the skin just kind of wrapping around forming into it with the shoulder pads here but the crystals look amazing on his shoulder though where it's this nice gloss white over top and then it gets more of a red tinge to it as it starts going into the shoulder which looks freaking painful and the one thing that kind of sucks about these crystals on the shoulder is if there's going to be any damage happening to this guy, it's probably going to be with the paint job on the shoulders here with it being very glossy and smooth. Any kind of nicks to it is probably going to take off some of the paint on here, which you'll see right here. There's a little bit removed right here already. And also on the right shoulder here, you'll notice a couple little nicks on the back here, which is unfortunate, but isn't anything new for any of my Space Godzilla figures like there's going to be anything wrong with the paint. It's usually always with the crystals just because it's white. Any kind of damage really does show up on those things, which is the only major bummer, but they still look very eye-catching. Like this guy, Space Godzilla is a very visually striking kaiju in terms of drastic color change with the dark blue reds into these more bright white and metallic silvers. Then moving down to the arms, very typical Godzilla looking arms, but they are this very nice dark purple hue. But towards the nails here, you get this nice gloss white that go into a more purple tinge here as they go into the hand. Looks really nice and helps to give them a nice little variety of detail there. And then for his body, again, looks freaking awesome. Really like how they help to convey how the lower abdomen's kind of hooking into the chest region here. Like how you've seen in the film. Does look really nice while also not really taking away from the articulation of his upper body here, which is really cool. Then moving down to his legs. Look very Godzilla-esque except for the kneecaps here where they come out in this more of a flower pattern here on his kneecaps here, which is the primary difference. And then more of the gloss white here on the nails. And then you can also see very vibrantly the purple here when it's going into the toes right there. And just to give you guys a better look at the dorsal spines, which are freaking awesome on this figure. It's very visually catching here with the nice geometry and the solid shapes here for all his dorsal spines here. Even at the base of the tail and just moving up towards the tip, the dorsal spines look freaking awesome. But even though the details on Space Godzilla are freaking boss, one thing that this figure is lacking in terms of a lot of the other SH Monster Arts figures is in the articulation category, which for his head can look up about that far, using all of his joints here for his neck. Can move down about that far, but on mine, my head actually likes to pop out pretty easily. But it can move down about yay far, which is actually still a pretty good downward look. For his shoulders, has absolutely no articulation here because of the crystals and whatnot. Which, in the film, it doesn't really bother me that his articulation is a little bit lacking. Because in the film, he was a very mobile kaiju, and then the figure pretty much accurately represents that. But he does have a decent amount of articulation here for the arms, which can go up about that far, back about that far, upwards about yay far, inwards about that far. Has a decent bend here at the elbow. Also has a rotation here at the lower part of the elbow. Also has a rotation at the hand, which is on a ball joint, so you actually get a decent amount of play with that. 
Can also rotate a little bit here at the upper part of the bicep, but nothing too crazy. And then for his waist, can look about that far to the left, that far to the right. Has a little bit of a tummy crunch, about that far forward, about that far back, which is not very crazy for any of these SS Monsters figures, which is a little bit of a bummer. But it does make sense because the upper body on Space Godzilla didn't really move, especially with these parts looking like they were pretty solidly formed on the actual suit. And on the figure, it helps to represent that pretty well, while still giving a little bit of articulation. So it makes sense for the figure. Maybe I'd like to see a little bit more there, but eh, it, it's suitable. And for his legs, move outwards about that far, inwards about that far. Has actually a very nice forward kick where his leg goes up about that far and backwards about that far. And I'll just show you guys both legs going outwards and inwards. For his knee, has a bend about that far back, that far forward. Has a decent amount of rotation there too, which is pretty impressive. And then for his feet, can move upwards about that far, downwards about that far. Can rotate all the way around. And then for his tail, starting up here, you get ball joints from here coming all the way down to right about there. So you get a lot of posability with the tail in this kaiju here. Just be a little bit careful with the dorsal spines coming into contact with each other when you're moving them, because I kind of worry about some of the paint getting scuffed here a little bit. But he does actually have a wide range of motion here for his tail, which is something that's actually really awesome for these SS Monster Arts figures. Like he definitely has one of the more impressive tails and it actually holds a pose very well too. And here we have the SX Monster Arts Godzilla with some other SX Monster Arts figures with the Heisei Space Godzilla and Little Godzilla. And here's some NECA Godzilla action figures with the 1994 Godzilla vs Space Godzilla Godzilla, eh? And the 1954. And here's some other Space Godzillas in my collection with the Japanese vinyl Space Godzilla here which I think is from Monster Island and the Treadmasters version. And here's some NECA Pacific Rim figures of the Hong Kong Brawl, Gypsy Danger, and Leatherback. And here's the cute little chibi Space Godzilla. So overall with the SS Monster Space Godzilla, his details are phenomenal. While his articulation is a little bit lacking compared to a lot of the other SH Monsters figure, he more than makes up for it with his accessors. And if you guys have the Mogir and Little Godzilla, with Space Godzilla here, you actually get what I would say is the best looking diorama set pieces out of all the SH Monsters figure without having to go get extra things to make the set pieces look amazing, which is saying something for this figure here, which I definitely recommend you guys picking up Space Godzilla, especially if you're really into the SH Monster Arts line anyways, then you guys need to be adding Godzilla Space Brother to your collection today. But what do you guys think? Have you guys picked up the SH Monster Space Godzilla? What's your favorite Godzilla clone or is originals just more your thing? Please let us know in the comments. A little closer picture of this guy on Facebook. You want to click the link in the description below. Help us defeat those kaijus by hitting that like button. Subscribe, become a ranger today, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. I will defeat you once and for all, destroyer. Wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There are two of you? This one here is an imposter. He is actually Boba Fett. Dun, dun, dun. Sorry. Well, you got me. I was just here to collect a bounty. A bounty on who? Yo, mama, sweet ass. Now, jetpack. Away. Oh, yeah. Uh, huh. Did I ever tell you your mom's a really nice lady? Hey guys, welcome to Super Important Reviews. My name's Steve, and today we're going over the Beta Tomas Nation Essays Monster. It's Burning Godzilla. This is my figure I acquired at G-Fest that I was looking for for so, so long. Which I finally did manage to get a hold of one. Paid a little bit more money than I really wanted to for the action figure. But it was worth it because I still got cheaper than eBay price, so I was pretty happy. And as you might be able to tell a little bit, I got a slightly new setup right now where I can actually hopefully be able to do bigger figures from this table and not have it look atrocious with the ugly orange curtains. So we're going to try a new setup and let me know in the comments what you guys think about it. But without further ado, for the packaging, looks freaking awesome. Love everything about this where you get the awesome menacing looking burning Godzilla right here. Which I imagine that's the action figure. But it's probably not because that looks a lot like the suit. Because that thing looks freaking fantastic right there. But for the rest of this, you just get the nice kind of burning, smoking effect for the rest of the box here. See, the toy is not actually inside the packaging because he lasted about an hour in my possession until I actually busted him out of this prison. So he's not currently in there right now. For the top of the packaging, you just get a nice burning Godzilla clear plastic right here. Get the image of the figure here, Godzilla 1995. Side of the packaging, get a nice black and white image of him roaring. Looks pretty cool. 
Godzilla and the same glittery effect that we got for Destroyer. For the other side of the packaging, more glitters. And for the back of the packaging, you just get Godzilla and a lot of awesome poses. A ton of Japanese that I can't understand. They get Godzilla vs. Destroyer poster at the bottom. And some Lego Mumbo Jumbo. So let's get this guy open up. Actually, he's already out of here. So let's get into him. All right, so now that we have Godzilla out of my display case, because that's where he's been chilling for a little while, first we're going to go over some of his accessories, starting with two Mazer Tanks, which I'm pretty sure they're called Mazer Tanks. It's, I'm a little bit rusty on these. But for the vehicles, they do look awesome they're in this nice military green with silver here for the barrels and what's cool is is that i initially thought when i got these guys i was gonna be getting the same ones i got with the tokyo effect set but they are actually slightly different than what you get in the set primarily this one it has the missile pods on the side here which looks really cool and then this one's actually just an entirely completely different mold which what these were for is in the movie they were actually trying to cool down godzilla's body temperature by shooting him with freezing rays i guess and that's what these vehicles are here, pretty much here to help represent and they all look really good they even have a little bit of articulation where they can actually rotate i haven't really messed around with this one but they can rotate all the way around so they do have a little bit of articulation which is kind of cool because these things are stupid tiny grabbing godzilla for a second like here is godzilla's foot next to these things which is cool because that's Pretty appropriate in my opinion, so I love that they scale very well with this. And here's another shot of them chilling next to the burning Godzilla. And what's kind of cool too is he comes with an extra set of hands, but for his original hands, they're actually in a more kind of clenched position where it's very standard for the Godzilla look. And then real quick, how you get them off is pretty much like any of the other SH Monster Arts figures. You pretty much just want to make sure you're holding close to the ball joint here, so you want to grab at the end of the forearm and the base of the hand. And then you just pretty much pull it apart. Might be a little bit of a pain because I haven't actually done this before yet. Come on. There we go. All right, that was a little bit of a pain in the butt. If you guys do have trouble with this or when you're pulling it apart, if it does feel a little bit scary, just grab a hair dryer. Really helps out a lot to help soften the plastic so you just pop these things in and out pretty easily. But we're going to grab his extra hand. And then you just pretty much... Insert it right back in, which this is really stiff still. Get in there, hand. All right, we got the hand in. And then, uh, actually, I'm just going to do this off camera. Right back, guys. Then for his other hands, they're in this more open, kind of ready-to-battle position, like he's about to claw at somebody's face. <laughs> which, personally, I kind of like these a little bit more, just because, especially with his overall very menacing appearance, it just kind of just makes him look a little bit more battle-ready then the little bit more clenched hands. So this is definitely going to be the way I'm going to be displaying them in my collection. And bringing them in for a closer look, head sculpt looks freaking awesome. Love all the molded details out of there because each of these like teeth and stuff and same with the scales are all individually sculpted. Like each of these are meant to look like that, which looks really good. Really love his eyes where they have this nice flaming red and then some gold and black for the pupils, which looks really sweet. Gives him that nice, very accurate, menacing look that he had from the films. And then for his overall head sculpt, looks really good as well. Even has his little Godzilla ears right here on the side. Really like the brow in this Godzilla. You can even see on the top of his head where you have the dorsal spine starting to show up and then you have all that white right there. Then you can see for his mouth, all his teeth look sweet. Love the bone white color. And even on the inside of the mouth, you get this nice fleshy tones with this more of a normal red with the dark red undertones. Looks really good. Same with the tone here. It looks awesome as well. It's a little bit more of a darker shade to it. The only thing is, is you can kind of see the hinge on the inside of the mouth though for his lower jaw, which isn't that big of a deal, but it's something that's a little bit noticeable looking at it from this angle. But it doesn't really bother me all that much. Now it's starting to move down his giant bulky neck that he has. Looks really good. And you can start seeing the flame effect right here on his chest and on his arm. Which for his skin, it's a little bit of a darker uh, charcoal color. Which on the camera here, it kind of makes it seem like it's a little bit brighter with all the lighting here. But it's actually a pretty dark shade. And then for his uh, burning effect here... It looks really awesome because it's more of this like translucent plastic here, kind of like what we have with the NECA, but the color scheme seems a little bit more appropriate to me. 
Like, they, they definitely went all out in this figure, and it looks phenomenal. And then for the rest of his body here, which I kind of wish they did a little bit more of it with the lower body, because if you adjust the torso a little bit, you can see a little bit more of it. So I guess you can kind of fudge around with it a bit to get the burning effect a little bit more. But it's not quite as awesome looking as it is on the chest as it is on the lower section here. But still looks really good nonetheless. And you even got the same effect coming along here on his legs. It looks really good. It's only mainly at the upper portion of the thighs. It doesn't really bleed down to the rest of the legs, which look fairly normally Godzilla, where you even have his four toes right down here. Very accurate for the movies. Even has details here underneath the foot pad, and you even got some copyright information on this foot. But they look really good, which is something that's cool because this Godzilla is very huge, but in a good way because. Look, his upper body looks very bulky, very muscular. Same with his legs, even though they kind of remind me of chubby grandma legs, but they do look really good because they help to give him added mass and make him look even more imposing. And for his dorsal spines, look really awesome. Love the translucent spines with here as well, where you have this nice translucent plastic, more of an auburn color right around here for the tip of the spines. And then they actually have a more solid coloring for the base of it, which looks really awesome. And then what's kind of cool that I always thought was pretty neat about this Godzilla is that these kind of look like they're on fire, while the rest of his dorsal spines look fairly normal. Where there's a nice, very white color, like these are very bright looking spines. He's even coming around the, along the rest of the tail, you can see just how good the coloring looks on him. And one thing, the only thing that really kind of bugs me about the whole coloring on here is... Nothing actually really having to do with the spines. It's actually right up here at the base of the neck. Because you kind of see here that the paint job is a little bit sloppy there. Nothing too major, but it's just kind of something a little bit weird to see on the SH Monster Arts figures. It's nothing too bad. It's just kind of clumped together mainly right there. But for the rest of this, it looks really, really good. And then one thing to kind of point out about this Godzilla mold in general, which is kind of just... A little bit of a problem I kind of noticed with the mold is that there's actually a lot of segmenting here where you can kind of see when you're moving them, you can see the holes in the uh, overall mold, which is mainly for the articulation, but you can adjust and fix it so you don't actually see those. But when you wanted to get him like in positions where he's like upright and roaring, you're going to notice that there's actually a lot of it here on the legs, especially if you shift him down, you can kind of start noticing all the little holes you can even see through to the other leg there. But a lot of it can be fixed if you just adjust the legs into a position that you want and then just kind of shift it to get how you want it to look on your display case. Same with the arms here too, you can notice a little bit of the gap here, but it is pretty easily fixable just by shifting the guy's arm up and down a little bit just to help hide that. Let me just show you guys the tail real quick, look awesome as well, where you got his normal Godzilla wrinkle scales right here while you have the more normal looking skin underneath the tail where this would be like the more softer underbelly of the tail and this would be the more durable hard exterior shell which looks really good like it just helps to give him a little bit more detail to him which i can appreciate and the dorsal spines look awesome there as well each are individually sculpted painted very well one thing to kind of point out too is that he has a little bit of added paint and <laughs> i don't know if it's just like Something scuffed off or something, but he's got a little bit right here. I'll zoom in real quick. Is right here, you can see that there's a little bit of white paint right there, or more of like a flesh tone. Which I'm not sure what that's from or where it got from, because there's none of that color actually on this Godzilla, but it's just maybe something like chipped away or something. But I got a little bit right there on the neck is the primary point. So pretty much for the paint job, looks really good. Like there's pretty much that one minor hiccup with the neck paint, and then just that weird little paint right there. But pretty much for the rest of it, looks phenomenal. Sculpt, again, looks phenomenal. I have this kind of loose foot right here, which I just popped off. Get back on there. But, all right. All right. But for the rest of it, like the sculpt looks good. Love the translucent plastic. Love the body shape to it. And then for the articulation, head can move up, down, left, right. Mouth can move up and down. For the shoulders, they can move up about yay far, down about that far. Can rotate up about that far. Eh, pretty much all the way around if you go the back way. So a lot of posability there. For the upper part of the bicep, can rotate all the way around. 
the lower part by the elbow there is a double joint here so you get a really nice bend to it also has a little bit of rotation here at the upper part of the forearm you can also rotate at the hand all the way around also has a little bit of a bend here at the hand so you get a little bit of a waving slash clawing motion going on for the waist can shimmy side to side has a really nice abdominal crunch to it also has a pretty good rotation here which is really impressive on this guy for his leg can do split out about that far it's actually pretty good on this guy can crunch in about that far can do about that forward of a kicking motion actually it can pretty much go all the way around it feels like that nah, stops about right there and then going the back way can shimmy it pretty much up above that far just has a little bit of a hard time actually rotating all the way around but you can pretty much move that pretty insanely actually then also has a little bit of a rotation here at the upper part of the knee has a really nice bend to it here at the knee like surprisingly it moves pretty well but there is a lot of loose kind of just plastic just sitting on top of the joints here but that kind of stuff can kind of shift around too a little bit also has a rotation here at the lower part of the knee has a nice bend here at the feet can also rotate all the way around and has a little bit of a pivot to it and then for the tail you pretty much got the segment joint starting here at the butt area and then it just pretty much each of these little lines coming along the tail here for the section each are their own articulated joints coming all the way down to right here is where the tail becomes one solid piece so for each of these they're on their own ball joints so they can pretty much shimmy side to side up down can pretty much rotate it too so you get a lot of pulls ability with this tail here and <laughs> that stupid foot keeps popping off so all right, for one pro, my little guy's articulation, which I think is just mainly this figure, which I think it just has something to do with the size of the hole right here for the ball joint. It's just really loose on mine, which isn't a major deal. Like, there's bound to be something that's a little bit off with the figure, which this is just more of an annoyance than anything. But it doesn't really overall affect my opinion on this figure. It's just kind of a little bit annoying, but he's mainly going to be staying in the shelf, so... Having the foot be a little bit loose isn't that big of a deal. And for some quick comparison, here we have the SH Monsters Burning Godzilla next to the SH Monsters Destroyer and Godzilla Jr. And here he is with the SH Monsters Destroyer Evolution set. And here he is with the SH Monsters San Diego Comic Con Exploding Godzilla and my random little chibi Burning Godzilla. He's so freaking adorable. And here he is with the American Bandai Burning Godzilla, which is definitely obsolete in my collection now. And the Japanese Bandai Vinyl Movie Theater release Godzilla 2000 from Godzilla X Megaguirus. Which I'm going to say, I don't usually actually keep the tags on my figures. Like half the time when I buy vinyls, I try to actually buy them without the tags. Because they're slightly cheaper and I really just don't like displaying them in my collection with these things. But for the more limited edition run kind of figures, I don't mind keeping them on personally. And for a comparison that I couldn't actually do in the original review that I did for the NECA Burning Godzilla. Here it is with the NECA Burning Godzilla. And one thing I want to finally point out is which figure do I like better? Which, for the review, stated, I still really like this figure, and I actually prefer this one a little bit over the 94 Godzilla, the Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla NECA figure. But that being said, now that I have him, he sadly isn't going to be hanging out with my Destroyer anymore because, like I said in the review, he was pretty much mainly a placeholder so I could get a hold of this figure. And now that I have it, I personally like this figure a lot more than this one, but you end up paying that in the price because Burton G right here ran me about six times as much as what this guy is going to run you at a Toys R Us. So for the price, still really like this guy, but if you're a hardcore collector and want something that's very accurate to the film and really awesome, then I would definitely go with the SH Monster Arts version here. So overall with the SH Monster Arts Burning Godzilla, I am super glad I picked this figure up at G-Fez because he was the only figure that I was really mainly missing in my collection for the SH Monster Arts line. And I missed my opportunity to pick him up for cheap way back when and he sold out. So I ended up having to pay the price at the convention, which 
I was more than happy to pay for that price because he was getting, he was the only monster I was really missing for the, his film. And the Nike Godzilla did a pretty good job of replacing my collection, but personally, I'm an SH Monster Arts guy. I really needed this figure for my collection. The details on him are awesome. The articulation is really good. If you guys have the Rebirth Godzilla mold, it's literally the exact same mold, just in the Burning style, which I personally like a little bit more because Burning Godzilla is sweet. And getting this figure now makes me not really need the Rebirth mold nearly as much. Still kind of want to get it though, but... I can live without it for a little while longer. And in the end, I would recommend picking up this figure if you could find him for a reasonable price. Right now, if I'm not mistaken, he goes for around 180 on eBay, which you can find him cheaper, but usually you're paying for the shipping for this guy. Or you gotta fight for the auctions to try to get them a little bit cheaper. At that price, it's hard to recommend because that's a lot of money. Like, I paid less for Destroya. But if you can find them for a reasonable price, like I'd say somewhere in the $100 range, or if you're just in need of this figure as much as I was, then I definitely recommend picking this figure because I don't see them re-releasing it anytime soon, at least in the burning style. And this guy needs to be in your collection. So what do you guys think? Do you guys have the Essex Monster Arts Burning Godzilla? Have you guys seen Godzilla vs. Destroy? Or is NECA just more your thing? Please let us know in the comments. A little closer picture of this guy on Facebook. You want to click the link in the description below. Help us defeat those kaijus by hitting that like button. Subscribe to become a ranger today. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. Godzilla, when I grow up, I want to be just like you. Oh, don't worry, son. One day, you're going to be even more powerful than I am. Really? Sure. Yeah, movie later. Yeah, who's the big sexy kaiju now? Look at these fully developed arms and long slender legs. Oh, hey, little Godzilla, what's up? I'm not little anymore, jeez. I hate to break it to you, but when you're the same size as you were in the last movie, nothing's changed. You must have gotten that from your mom's side. Hey, Rangers, welcome to Super Report Reviews. My name's Steve. My name's Arnaz. And today we got a shout out because somebody subscribed to our Patreon account. Steve. That does not mean literally shout out in the camera, man. Yeah, shout and yell. It's awesome. It is awesome because it's only $10, man. You're amazing. Fantastic for uh, Colby Fulce. I hope I said that right. I'm sorry if he didn't. <laughs> you know what? Just to be sure, I'm going to slap him. Oh, God. Ah, face. All right. Just get, get into it. But today we're going to be going over the SH Monster Arts Little Godzilla and Godzilla Jr. Whoa, whoa, as a. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, that's Thank not, you. That's not a little Godzilla. That's Minia. You shut your mouth. <laughs> Don't you ever disrespect the little ball of cuteness right there. Uh, we're mainly doing this review as a uh, thank you for the $10. And this is probably the most requested review that we have on this channel. For some odd reason, everybody is super fixated on us going over these figures. So, because we had a donation on Patreon, we're going to go over these figures here. Because I was going to do another Evangelion figure review. Uh, actually, I was going to do two, so that's the main reason why there's two here. But we're going to do something that'll actually get views so people can see that we're tanking that guy. Yeah. I like that Evangelion crap. Oh, I like the Evangelion crap. But if you don't know where these guys are from, Little Godzilla is from Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. Minia. Little Godzilla. And Godzilla Jr. is from Godzilla vs. Destroya. It's also the technically the same kaiju. But they're both the same... Height? They don't look the same. I think you're lying to me. Which is odd. <laughs> this one's a little bit different green color, Steve. You lied to me. You've seen the movie. Also, I got a band-aid on my finger because I have boo-boo. Got it at work. Steve's a boo-boo. <laughs> <laughs> I took my shirt off. And it didn't be funny me. I thought I looked ripped. But, alright, so anyways, without further ado, further packaging, getting these guys out of the way for a second. But for a little Godzilla's packaging, you get a nice image of a figure. I can't, that, or is that the suit? I don't know, but it's pretty ugly. Uh, what? That is a cuteness. Hey, I want my... All the time right there. I want my Godzilla monster to be mean, tough, not cute and adorable. But that's the whole... No. Anyways, no. I, I appreciate... But the package is majority wise green. You also have a clear plastic little Godzilla on the top with uh God and that little picture right there, it looks like baby Godzilla. Oh, why does that look like a mug shot or something? <laughs> <laughs> it's this DUI shot. On this side of the packaging, you get little Godzilla doing a dance, a nice shot of his uh pecs right there. On the side of the packaging, just more little Godzilla and a lot more green. Back of the packaging just shows you what the figure comes with, him and some dynamic poses, some stuff I can't understand. 
Yeah, I got a little Space Godzilla poster and some Lego Mumbo Jumbo. And then for Godzilla Jr.'s packaging, you get a nice shot of, I'm 100% certain that is a suit right there. Because that looks way more detailed than the actual figure, but we'll go over that in a second. You get clear plastic, so you see uh, Godzilla Jr. on the inside of the box. Top, just more clear plastic. Godzilla Jr., uh, another awesome green mug shot. On the side of the packaging, just more Godzilla Jr., but actually the figure, and some more chest shots. On this side of the packaging, just more Godzilla Jr., and back of the packaging, just him with some dynamic poses, more stuff I can't understand, Godzilla vs. Destroyer poster, and even more mumbo jumbo. So, uh, let's get into the actual figures. Alright, so first we're going to start with little Godzilla right here, and for his accessories, he comes with uh, four pieces of crystal that you can also have posing with Space Godzilla, which is generally what I have it doing. So you get two big ones, two small ones. So you stole his accessories and gave it to another creature? Uh, yes. <laughs> you are a monster. <laughs> well, I kind of just have little Godzilla just like chilling on my shelf, and then Space Godzilla needs way more crystals than he came with. And then you also get two clear, oddly colored stands, which are to hold the crystals in. So wait, shouldn't they like, you know, color that like dirt or something at least? Because it's, you know, it's holding the crystals for the prison. Uh, you would think. I kind of wish they just would have went with the standard like clear plastic. But as you can see, how you insert these into here is on the bottom of the stands, there's going to be three peg holes total. You just kind of pick which one you want to put it in. You insert it in. And uh, initially too, when these come in, they'll have uh, little inserts on the inside when you just pop them out so you can put the crystals in but as you can see looks pretty cool with our little Godzilla here you can also uh, articulate these at the base so you can make the little crystal pyramid or crystal prison I should say that's still kind of a pyramid uh, mine sometimes like to pop out pretty easy but uh, what you can also do because moving your shelf around and stuff around you'll see that these will just slide around they also come with uh, four of these little connector pieces total which what you do with these is on the bottom here, you notice that there is some peg holes right here on the sides. You can kind of just pick a side, insert these into it. And the other stand has literally the exact same thing going on. And I do like that they give you four of them in case you lose them, but you only really need two. Unless you uh, pick up more little Godzillas, but then you'd also have like even more of those, so kind of defeats the purpose. Now, your stands are fully connected. Stays together pretty well until you start trying to lift it up and then sometimes it likes to pop out. Or fall off. More so than the crystals and the actual base. But now you can set them on top, close them in, and now he's trapped forever. Or at least until Godzilla rescues him. God, I hope he don't. Because he turns into this, Steve. He turns into this. <laughs> Just leave him in that prison. He'll stay but that adorable. The, we, if he doesn't change, we wouldn't get Destroyer. Stay adorable, man. So for little Godzilla's details, head sculpt is freaking adorable. With his giant little baby eyes. And his cute little mouth with uh, his little sharp teeth for eating fruits. Because you don't ever really see him eating anything like meat related. He's uh, a meat eater, Steve. You're stupid. You think I'd be stupid, but you're wrong. Or, please please tell him he's wrong. Uh, but for his head, you can see the trademark Heisei Godzilla ears on the side. On the back here, you get the dorsal spine starting to form. But the paint job is a little bit sloppy here at the top, but nothing too bad. Then you get his cute little dorsal spines coming down the back and going down his little tail. Which kind of looks like cauliflower or something. Like some sort of weird vegetable just sticking out of his back. Don't make fun of him. But you, you've been this entire time. I'm allowed to. You're not. But I want to make fun of things too. You're the serious one, Steve. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but for his arms, uh, nothing too much to really say here other than it's just very Godzilla looking. His nails are painted in a bone coloring. For his chest, done in a very sand color, which contrasts the overall green color of the kaiju. Which is odd, because Godzilla is like charcoal black, right? Why is little Godzilla green then? He hasn't been burned yet. But by they radiation. both... But they're both affected by radiation. So. You want to know what else? I got a new name for him. Huh? I'm going to call him C Cup. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> <laughs> 
There he's got his little pot belly tummy. And for his legs, a little bit of a chubbers down there as well. You can see his little bit of his kneecaps, just like his big old papa. For his feet, he's got four toes. Some detailing on the bottom section for the pads. And his tiny little tail. Now, for his articulation, his mouth can go up and down. So you can have him kind of talking if you want. No other articulation here at the head. His chest can move back and forth. No real wiggle to it though on the sides. Arm could go up about that far. Down about that far. Go all the way around though. Has a little bit of bend here at the elbows. Also a little bit of rotation here up at the shoulder as well. Hand can rotate all the way around. A little bit of a pivot to it as well. His legs can go in. Out about that far, but then you got a crap ton of gapping. Inwards about that far. Really nice forward kick, though. Especially for a Godzilla figure. Then can go backwards about that far. Is you know it why he has that kick forward? Really kick. nice bend here at the knees. Why is that? Because he's going to turn into the original Godzilla so he can do that kick. You remember from that movie? Oh, where he's on his tail. Yeah. Just, woo! <laughs> <laughs> But you don't even need it then. You need his tail to articulate, which sadly only can rotate side to side here at the base. No other articulation for his tail. And that's pretty much it. Just a little bit of bend here at the feet. So for a monster's figure, not the most articulated, but pretty much it is. It's what it needs to be. It's adorable looking. I Maybe I like a, a little bit more of articulation here up at the head so the head can rotate. But I do like that there's no seam line there because there's no articulation so it makes them look a little bit cleaner. So overall, pretty happy with this guy. And then next we will go over Godzilla Jr. I will uh, let Arnaz take over the reins here in just a second. But for his accessory... I do have a question, Steve. Are you sure you want me to do this? After messing with him for 10 minutes, I don't think I have a lot of positive things to say about him. But we're, we're the house of positivity here. So he comes with two helicopters, which is here for a lot of the scenes where you have the uh, the little group chasing Godzilla Jr. around and when he fights Destroya and when he's like in the water. Uh, so that helps to replicate that. Also, I like to use these ones with Shin for reasons. I don't know why. I just like, like actually, this is another one. I don't have them posing with him. I have them posing with Shin. You're a horrible person, Steve. <laughs> but it's because I just... You know what? I'll let you take over it's, here it's just like, a second. It's like taking like a Woody's hat and putting it on top of Gypsy Danger. I've done it. They've seen it. If they watched uh, any of this, <laughs> anything on this channel, you have eventually. Oh, actually, no. Uh, yeah, on this channel. Yeah, because it was uh, the skit for Polaris had Woody on it, or the Woody hat. But uh, for the helicopters, they just sit on top of this bendy wire here, so you can kind of just bend this however you feel like. But when you start bending at weird angles, the little stand here is knock it off. off with those blades, Steve. Be careful. Uh, but the stand will not hold this in. Also, what's kind of sucky is the wire likes to pop out of the stand real easy, too. Can I be honest? It looks kind of cheap, dude. It, it is. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I kind of wish there was, like, they uh, would have went with a route more aligned to the Toa effect sets with the little jets for that. They had, like, a little... Yeah smaller caps so you could stick this on top of that would have been great no i appreciate what they did with this you know it's kind of cool but I, it looks cheap it looks like if i freaking sneeze on it's gonna fall over you know yeah but uh for a little closer look at the detail for the helicopters anyways i'm gonna try to keep this on the stand because if i start moving my fingers it's just my fat fingers are gonna take up most of the shot the viewers are right steve you are fat with your fingers they don't have to tell me i love fast food <laughs> I can't stop myself. <laughs> but for the details for the helicopters, look really nice. It's done in a metallic silver with a little bit of black here for the little landing, uh, whatever you call that, the landing strip thing. <laughs> it's something. Some technical term I can't think of right now. Uh, for the cockpit, it is done in a metallic blue. Have the little rotors on the back here. And hey, on Steve, the top. You ever, you ever seen that movie Black Hawk Down? Yep. Yeah. Take a kid away. <laughs> Back hog down. But for the top of the helicopter, the propellers are done in a translucent plastic, which kind of gives the uh, illusion that they are running. And then it also comes with... I forgot. It's in the Can't box. You stupid, Steve. It's flying, not running. They don't have legs. That's what they're called. <laughs> legs. God, if only I could remember that. Pair of just standard propellers. 
which I don't really like using these ones because personally I, I kind of like the look that they're already flying. So these are kind of cool if you just want to sit down on the table just to make it look like it's stagnant. Options, man. It does give you options, but you do get two of these. And now that I kicked Steve out of the seat, I have one question, Steve. Why did you let me do the ugly one? Because uh, over on the Geek Chest, we did a top 10 least favorite SH Monster Arts figures in my collection. Uh, this guy made the top 10. You know... Actually, I think he was number 4, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he was pretty up high. At first, I didn't understand you. Like, what? Three? I don't know. Subscribers, let me know in the comment section below. At first, I didn't understand why you put him on there. Until I was over here in a corner playing with him for 10 minutes. Yeah, playing with my toys. God, 30 old player with toys, Jesus. Oh, <laughs> I'm done. I love those comments because it's like, what were you expecting? <laughs> were you expecting my 11 year old to be playing with like two $300 toys? Well, for years, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna solve this review right now, you guys. Megatron, no! The end. Boom. All right, let's just get this over with, Steve, before I pull that gun again on him. Uh, the one positive thing I really do enjoy about him is his eyes. They really do stick out, especially on the color that he comes with, the green color, you know? Yeah. And his eyes are, what color is that, Steve? Orange. I'm going to say orange from this distance. Eh, to me, it looks more like amber. Sure. You know what? Violet. Let's just throw some <laughs> random names. What other colors do people name it's their Michelle. kids? <laughs> Michelle. What? I love this Michelle <laughs> Oh, God. For his head sculpt, it's weird. And it took me a little while to figure out why he's so weird until Steve pointed it out. He's more of a... What's that form called? Uh, he resembles more of the Godzilla source than actual Godzilla. Yeah, he definitely does because he definitely has like this hunch right here I don't like. And his long neck. And I can't fix it. If I do, he looks weird. Like, look at that. I don't know, to be honest, that looks more straight than how you had it originally. Because now the dorsal spines are all gapped. Are you happy, Steve? No. Because by the time he's 30, he's going to have a broken back if he keeps walking <laughs> like this. You're supposed to have a team lift and it's over 50 pounds, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, we're never going to get this done. All right, for his closer details, um, you can see his little nostrils up here he has. His tongue actually looks like it's wet, and I really uh, appreciate that about the figure that they did. Yeah, what's nice is for how small it is, they put a lot of effort into it. They put a lot of effort that it failed. Oh, why? How did it fail? He like even his teeth are painted. Holy. Like I will say that this thing is definitely nicer painted than the Shin Godzilla. Oh, man, Steve, you're really asking for it. You know, there's going to be like ten people to actually watch this whole video is going to hear that. <laughs> it's gonna be great. <laughs> oh god so for his back it's really hard to get everything aligned properly i don't know because they put a lot of joints on him or what he does have a ton for being how small of a figure like he's about the same size as the little godzilla and he has way more joints i don't know if it was a good idea though because he's having a really like hard time i yeah i kind of feel like he maybe could have been better served with a little bit less articulation but for the back when you go down to the paint job you see there's a lot of missed opportunities, like especially right there. The paint just like leaks all over his back. And I get it. You know, it's kind of hard to paint in between that stuff. But for the amount of money you're paying, Jesus Christ, you think they would put in a better effort into it? Which? You, you see what I'm talking about? See right there? Yeah. I, I don't like that. But besides that, it looks pretty good. They're tiny because he's tiny. I just don't get it how this cute thing evolves into this monstrosity. With back issues. Yeah, I like how he becomes like, he goes from like, literally a Godzilla source into cute, chibi, minya ish looking thing, into back into a Godzilla source when he gets more radiation. But going down his neck, it's really long, and I think that's one of the things that bugs me about this guy, is just how stupid long this thing is. My God, look at that. Even my fat fingers, like, are not big, that big. Yeah, <coughs> it's very long in the movie, too, though. Like, in terms of, like, overall scale with the movie, it, it does work really well. And going from his uh, long neck down to the rough chest, I really do like this. You want to talk about C-Cup? Like, look at that. I don't know. C-Cup over here. This guy's just a B-Cup. 
I don't know. I feel like, like he's wearing the push-up while this one's uh, hanging loose. He isn't uh, taking care of himself. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, I thought this was supposed to be a serious review. Uh, I don't think that's what we do around here, man. Touche. And we go from his uh, D cup down to his chest. Wait. Oh, it's gone up now? You went from C. I said C. You went to B, and now we're at D. You know what? You know, it's your foreign. I'll let it slide that you don't know the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. My alphabet has 32 letters in it, so. It has letters? I hate this guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going from his chest down to his stomach, which there's this gap right here. Yeah, that's one of the bigger issues I have with this guy. Is a little bit. Of, he has a lot of gapping issues, especially when you're articulating. Yeah, which is really one of the things that bugs me. I guess is his articulations. Well, it's not the articulations; it's the gaps that this thing creates when you articulate him. Which they should have not put this many on such a small figure. That or maybe clean it up. Just maybe like hinder the articulation, but lined up the plastic a little bit better. Yeah, because like look at that. Even in between his legs. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. There's, there, there is quite a bit of gapping there. If you ought to have it spaced out at all. Oh, poor guy. He didn't do anything to deserve that. Granted, you can't like line up the gap, line up the joints to make him, uh, the gapping not as big of an issue, but then it kind of hinders the posability a bit. Which defeats the whole purpose of having the joints to begin with. Yeah. I, I Like I said, I don't like it. Please don't hate me for that. I'm sorry, you guys. He does have very long, slender legs, though. Yeah, we're going down to his legs. Um, I feel like this one right here is a little bigger than this one. To me, at least, it is. A little bit. What's kind of odd, too, is he went from, like, super chubby legs from little Godzilla, which is very, again, Godzilla-ish, while this one is a little bit more lean <laughs> and more dinosaur. Yeah, plus there's this, like, uh... I feel like his kneecaps are on the wrong side, man. Like, what is this, an extra? No, yeah, it's just like kind of dinosaur joints. I don't... Or it has an extra bend on the back. You know what? You're right, Steve. We'll go to one positive thing about this guy. Is his long tail. Like, I really do appreciate it. Along it is. I do um, like the paint job that it went from charcoal to green. A little bit in between. There's some white down here. Or maybe they just messed that up. Either way, it turned out nice. Also, it's got the scaling right here. Then when you get closer to it, this uh, it's not so rough. Which up here at the top, if you can hear it. Stop rubbing my paint job off. <laughs> what paint job? It's just charcoal black. See? I guess it's from this, right? Yeah, well, it's just like the plastic underneath. All right, so far as articulation, head can look up about that far, down about that far. Steve kicked me out of chair. Can look a little bit to the left to the right. He didn't even want to do this, man. His mouth can open up and down. Has a little bit of a rotation to it, so you can get a little bit of a swivel to it. Arm can go up about that far, down about yay far. Can rotate all the way around. He can salute. That's a good thing. Yep. It's a little bit of rotation here at the top of the shoulder. Uh, not really at the elbow. Decent bend at the elbow though. Hand can rotate all the way around on the ball joint, so a little bit of play there for the wiggle as well. For his chest can go. Down about that far. Up about that far. That looks weird. Yeah. Talk about gapping again. Can go a little bit side to side. Legs can go out about that far. Inwards about that far. Pretty decent forward kick there as well. Can go backwards about that far. Can he do the sitting pose like the uh, little Godzilla? Uh, Almost. The tail kind of hinders that. But for his knees... Decent bend there as well. Got a little bit of rotation here at the top part of the thighs Huge too. Gap. Another rotation here at the knee, at his feet. A little bit of a bend here at the second joint. Same so, you know, here, his feet can pivot up and down. A little bit to the left and to the right. And then, just like Ernest said, the tail is on ball joints. So you can go get it about that far to the right, that far to the left, about that high up. And straightens up about that far. And for some quick comparisons, here we have the Little Godzilla and Godzilla Jr. compared next to some other SD's Monster Arts figures with Space Godzilla and Mogira. So are they supposed to be in scale with the Space Godzilla? Yes. So that's their actual size? Yes. For both of them? 
Yes. And here are the arc right next to the Estes Monster Arts Burning Godzilla and the second form from the Destroyer Evolution set. And here they are, compared next to some Monster Island Bandai Vinyls with Space Godzilla and Destroyer. And here they are, compared next to the Estes Monster Arts Shin Godzilla they were speaking of earlier, and the Robot Spirits Evangelion Unit 1. So overall, with the Estes Monster Arts Little Godzilla and Godzilla Jr., I personally think the Little Godzilla is definitely the better value than what you get with Godzilla Jr. Because overall, I just think the Little Godzilla is a better figure than what we got with the Godzilla Jr. And I like the accessories a little bit better with the crystals over the helicopters. I just think the crystals definitely make for a better display piece than the overall helicopters. Which was pretty much my main problem with uh, Godzilla Jr. Like, Little Godzilla came with enough that I feel like he was married at his own release. Well, Godzilla Jr. definitely needed to either come with another figure or come with more stuff to incorporate with other figures. So if you don't already have one, I would say the little Godzilla is definitely uh, the one I would go with over Godzilla Jr. But it kind of all depends uh, personally on what movies you prefer. Like if you like Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, then definitely get the little Godzilla. But if you're more of a Godzilla vs. Destroy a fan, then definitely would uh, lean more towards Godzilla Jr. Why are you recommending that to people, Steve? Well, I figure if you're watching this video and you like Estes Monsters, I figure like you're going to want it no matter what. Like, I don't think the Godzilla Jr. is a bad figure per se. Yeah. Just compared to most other Monster Arts figures, he's definitely lackluster. But how much is he? Uh, well, I think originally, like I said, when I picked him up, it was about 50 bucks. Yeah, that's now, but how much is he? Like, that was then. How much is he now, though? Well, I don't know. I don't keep up with the, I don't keep up with the random figures. That's not a you got your phone out, look it up, damn it. I don't even know what his name is. We've been saying it this entire <laughs> review. Godzilla Jr.? Yes. Minya. Well, both of these uh, appear to be a little bit over $100 nowadays. <laughs> which, that's kind of rough. Uh, if you can pick them up for definitely less than that, I would uh, recommend it. Like, somewhere in like the $50 range is a little bit more reasonable for these figures. Yes, please, for love of God, don't pay this much. But what do you guys think? Do you guys own the SH Monster as Little Godzilla and Godzilla Jr.? What's your favorite baby Godzilla or is Godzuki? Just more you think, please let us know in the comments. Well, a closer picture of these guys on our website if you want to click the link in the description below. We also have a Patreon account, so if you guys want to help support the channel, also down in the description. And help us defeat those guys just by hitting that like button, subscribe, become a ranger today. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.